if you can tell us who you are. Brenda and David McDowell. Hi, how are you doing? We have Hi. triplets. We oh, have look at that. triplets that are, are now 10. Are, I literally got, they're 10 years old. They're 10 now. That's before so the that injury. two boys and a girl? Two boys and a girl. And their names, I've written their names on the bus, so I do know. Richie, Robbie, and Claire, just as they are in that picture. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Okay. All right, so let's, let's mm -hmm. talk about what happened. Well, every day in our life was a party. Every single day they were holding hands and smiling and laughing and looking at each other, engaging in each other. And we brought them in at nine months and four days to do, we were doing one vaccine at a time. Um, they were born 36 weeks triplets, basically five pounds each. Um, yeah, we did well. They were well. Everything was well. They came home after a few days of being monitored in the NICU. And um, on June 25th, 2007, we brought them in for the pneumococcal shot. So just that shot? One shot. And I went in, um, not with my husband. He was working. I went in with my nanny. Um, and we went in at 10 a.m., is it all three? All three, yep. Yeah. And it was uh, the last one on the page is the t June 25th, 2007 was the shot that did it. And um, we went in at 10 a.m. for the shot. My daughter still has the mark on her leg from the shot. She was the first one to get it. And she screamed and never really stopped screaming after that. But we continued. We didn't know. We did the boys as well. By noon, Claire shut completely off. Claire. Claire, our daughter, shut off first. Um, it was as if she was blind and deaf and um, complete uh, failure to thrive from super, super happy, smiley girl to, um, this is a picture of her. She had full-blown eye contact. She was super lovely and um, she shut right down. And all she did at that moment was stare at the ceiling fan. So that was at noon. We had the shot at 10 a.m. Two o'clock, we watched Richie shut off. All his raspberry blowing and mama da da, and the furniture walking and everything just they just shut off. All the giggles, um, all the smiles. It again failure to thrive. Um, they lost all their reflexes. Um, I'm an educational audiologist. I actually did the test for the stapedial reflex, which is a little muscle in the middle ear, just to see if a muscle they can't control was still working, and it, it didn't. Um, the stapedial re reflex dampens sound, so your ears don't hurt from a really loud sound, and both of them had no stapedial reflex. They stopped blinking, stopped yawning, stopped coughing, stopped sneezing. Uh, you could go towards their eyes and they wouldn't even phase, nothing would phase them. They lost their startle reflex. Um, I threw um, a telephone book on the floor behind them and no startle, nobody even looked to see what it was. Um, but uh, so that was two o'clock, we watched Richie shut down and I couldn't breathe. But the, <laughs> there we go. The worst is when we saw the final one shut down. Sorry. Mm. There's Robbie, and we lost Robbie. Robbie looked like he was hit by a bus. Um, Robbie, from that moment on, had a stunned look on his face. Uh, if you asked or said his name, he still acted deaf and, and acted like he couldn't hear, although they did have normal hearing. I had it all tested. But um, he lost his happiness. This is a first, um, first year picture? First birthday. Three months after the shot. Three months after the shot. They were no longer engaged in anything or anyone. They lost their smiles. They, they just were um, in their own little separate worlds. They never held hands again. They never looked at each other again. Um, <laughs> sorry. Vaccine injury is real. We were told it was genetic. And then we were told by geneticists that there's no possible way three children were shut off on the same day. That that was absolutely statistically impossible, especially being two boys and one girl. So we were also told we could not sue anyone. We were told we signed for that shot. 
no doctors could be sued no vaccine uh, manufacturers could be sued um we found out when they were five and a half that there was a vaccine injury court when we i think we're all getting smartphones around then that's when we you know i had it at my pocket and started googling everything and they then told us that we were too late they only had three years to apply so we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to recover them the only person that we got back is rich uh, robbie um the one that was last to shut off we're making progress on all three we are making progress so we had severe autism um, spectrum disorder for all three kids entering kindergarten that's how long that severe even with all the therapies interventions you name it we did it um, we decided to go with the sunrise therapy which was to try and find happiness in our day and um, we have happy little people they're not they're not mean they're not aggressive they're very happy and I attribute that to the sunrise therapy um, but we still have a long ways to go Richie can only say single maybe two words together he um, he's in a lot of pain he's he grinds his teeth he's um, we're still working on it uh, Claire is still completely nonverbal not potty trained Richie's not fully potty trained Robbie is now and Robbie is approaching grade level but severe OCD and um, we're, we're coming along we just one day at a time uh, my husband wanted to kind of tell you what a day in our life can look like um, even, you know, because of what, the... What do you do? What's your... Property management. Um, let me tell you what a day in our life is. So you got, say, a six or seven or eight-year-old child who's not potty trained. And at two or three or four o'clock in the morning, they fill their diaper. Well, you assume that's pretty uncomfortable, so they take it off. Pretty soon, mm -hmm. pretty soon it's all over them. It's all over the bed. In short order, it's all over me, it's all over her. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm snapping at her, she's snapping at me. We're both snapping at the kid who is the only innocent party in the whole scenario. And the one thing that's conspicuously absent from that scenario is, uh, is anybody who told you that shot was safe. They were all asleep in their bed. They haven't got a problem in the world. The hard part about that is I asked the nurse. We actually had to go to Macomb Health Department to get our shots done because I had, did not have coverage for well baby coverage. So um, they said it would be a little cheaper because I'm doing three. Um, the nurse assured me over and over and over again that it would not harm them. It would not. I was so worried about that. And like you just said, where are they now? You know. I, um, I did make a report the very next day. I called the nurse, I called Macomb, they, they wrote it all out and they did not submit it. I found out later it was not sent in. Um, we found out seven years after we got the vaccine um, that it was contaminated and it was pulled from um, the market a week to a two weeks after we got the shot. So it was recalled for sterilization issues and we found out they wouldn't tell us what was wrong with the shot. Um, we found out from a friend who was a doctor looked up the lot number of the actual shot and found out that it was um, it had killed a two-year-old and they didn't want the public to know. Um, so that was the actual shot and lot number that we got and um, so I guess we're lucky that we didn't lose them. We could have lost all three on the same day completely. but. Um, uh, they just they lie. The first doctor we saw told us to invest in a group home. I mean, seriously. Then the second, and then we were we were given a yeah, lovely and wanted us to start up the vaccinations again. Yep, yep. Um, and then the 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 group of doctors we were with when this all happened gave us a breakup letter, and what said, they, well, "Go ahead." What happened is we woke up one morning and we had three happy, healthy nine-month-old children. By that evening, you know, we took them for a vaccination. By that evening, they were autistic. Uh, what we said to our pediatrician is, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to. We're not going to do any more vaccinations until we know what happened here. What they said is, if you don't continue to do exactly what you did the day your children turned autistic, we're going to fire you from our practice. So 
They broke up with us. <laughs> they broke up. They sent us a lovely letter saying we were no longer welcome at their practice because we weren't going to continue well baby checks. And that is the one decision that we'll never regret. Mm -hmm. just, you know. That, okay, just so you know, these people in Periscope are deeply sorry for everything that you've been to. It's mm -hmm. horrific. It's not okay. I know. They can argue with families that your child, because it might be a single child, was genetic. They can try and put that back on the family and say somehow your genes are weak. But with us having two boys and one girl, they lose the argument with us, hands down. So we are the living proof that they're all lying. All right, uh, I'm going to show you some of these parts because I come in thick and strong these people. Really? Love you. Yeah. Check. Let me just, sorry, I don't need to. One second. Okay. 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 Okay.